Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. There's another paid request from frame by frame. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, other than doing the last episode of season two, he also wanted a video of my overall thoughts so far on Stranger Things season one and two. And I'll say this. I don't hate the show. I hate parts of it, but I don't hate the show. I will say, to frame by frame, uh, I would like to take a break from Stranger Things. So if you do decide to request season three, maybe wait a few weeks, if if that's okay. Understand? Because. I think it's an okay show, but I do feel it's an overrated show. Now, based on season one and two, I do think the acting, especially by the kids, especially one the writer, David Harbour grew on me. The kids of Mike, Will, Eleven, yeah, they do their jobs well. The cinematography, spot on. The lighting, whether it be the inner workings where the date first opens in the first season, whether it be the hospital sequence when the characters have to get out of the hospital and the monsters all around and you have this dim lighting. Cinematography, solid. The songs, for the most part. I like the usage of even the end of season two, you have time after time and every breath you take. Uh, in season one, the we can be heroes. Some pretty decent songs on the soundtrack. The score, the synthesizer score. And you just have short songs. It's just either rainy as hell or hot as hell in Texas. It's just how it is. But... Cinematography, synthesizer score. I'm a sucker for synth, synth. They do a nice job. Establishes the feel of the 80s. The 80s little nuggets. You see the, the Terminator or something playing on TV. Or there's a poster of John Carpenter's The Thing. That's cool. That's cool to watch. Some. Some of the writing. And season two, the way they did with Paul Reiser and Sean Astin's characters, where, okay, is one of them going to be a bad guy? They did. They were actually on the up and up. Bob, Sean Astin's character, actually became one of the most endearing characters of the whole show, which, of course, is why his fate led up to that. Paul Reiser, the fact they didn't go with the typical, he's Burke, no, they went a different way. And apparently... One of the reasons, because Paul Rogers goes, I want to just play another Burke. I appreciate that. So I thought that was a nice surprise, at least for me. But with that said, I do think, number one, making this eight, nine episodes to me is a flaw. And is a weakness. Because I do think these are stories that could easily be told in three hours, give or take. I do think these are stories that don't justify... Well, they're not an hour long, but they're like what, 40, 50 minutes apiece. I don't think it justifies that length of time. I really don't. Because the stories are not... The most original. They're stories that you've seen plenty of times in various amounts of science fiction and horror movies, TV shows, episodes of other shows. And that's one aspect of the writing that isn't really the best. Where, like the monsters, the creatures, there's nothing really unique about them. There's nothing unique about the design 
I like the creatures in the first and second season. I like the big one that's the leader that's in because it's in the shadow, it's in the clouds, the red amongst the lightning. That's a cool look. It's a cool image. But the actual, as Dustin calls them, demo dogs. Again, they look like something that'd be in Res Resident Evil 7 from the mold. It just, it's a very blase design. And also, the fact that they do not use practical effects. Yes, I think for a show that is so honed in on the 80s. Which, by the way, I've seen that many other times. I almost want to say I'm getting tired of the 80s aesthetic, but you know, if it's done well, it's done well, to be fair. Like, to be honest, the one of the upcoming reviews, someone asked me to watch and review the first three episodes of American Horror Story 1984. And that's a, I'll say, the three episodes, uh, it's a twisty turny, like, that's a story that you don't know where the fuck it's going. I'll say that. Based on the three episodes. It still had that 80s aesthetic. And because it's more of a slasher film, there's... A bit more practical effects compared to this. But I mean, let some of the monsters have some type of practical effects or practical gore, something, man. And it just, when you're having this 80s aesthetic with the music and the synth and the look, and then this digital stuff pops in there, it sticks out like a sore thumb. I'm sorry. And when I say I think stuff could be con uh God, what was the word I was thinking of? They could be cut down, they could be God, there was another word. Fuck it up. Think of it later. There's a lot of fat that could be sucked out of this. To make it three hours and such. Because there are times where like season two. Okay, we start off with this these characters in their Scooby-Doo mystery van chased by the cops. Okay, this woman has a power. Where is this leading to? See, episode two, nothing. Three, nothing. Four, nothing. Five, nothing. Six, nothing. Seven, oh, finally. Now that the season's almost over, now we get back to your first fucking image of the season. Your first fucking five minutes of the season. Which should be pretty damn important. Nothing in 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Most of your fucking show. Nothing to it. Then you get an episode that I'm sorry. I think is pointless. Because you could take that out. And nothing much has changed. Why do I say that? Because someone's going to disagree. All the stuff Eleven learned from that. She could learn from seeing her mom. If you add in 5 more minutes with her mom. In her mind, the mom teaches her this and that. Boom. You got all that you got. All you need emotional wise. All you need to teach for the end. To use against the date wise. And you save people an entire episode of running time. And doesn't fuck with the pacing. And that's what I mean. There are times where it feels like the story is going in slow fucking motion. It doesn't seem we're doing this for the story. We're doing this because we need nine episodes. Shit. How we don't get nine episodes out of this. Okay. Add this in there. Add this in there. Add this in there. No, no. It would. You don't need nine episodes. This could be told in four or five episodes. Five. At least five episodes. Not nine and so, I don't give a shit about Barb. I barely... Know. Name three things about Barb in the first season that doesn't include her physical appearance or that she's fucking dead. You can't tell me how she looks. You can't tell me that she's dead. Name three things about Barb. Exactly. I didn't know shit about Barb. Barb was barely a fucking character. So I don't give a shit about, oh, we need to f justice for Barb. 
I didn't give a fuck about justice for Han. I don't give a fuck about justice for Barb even less so. Did not care about any of that. Max, okay, she likes to play a video game. Dig Doug. She gets with Lucas, and she has an asshole older brother. That's really all I know about her. And I didn't care about that character. I didn't give a shit about that character. It could be cut out. It could be excluded. Not needed. It's like, well, we need Lucas. Give him something to do. Give him something to do with the plot. Give him something to do with the story. Like the actual fucking predicament that we're in. Maybe he finds some type of thing that can actually really hurt these creatures. So he uses slingshot. Oh, that's nothing, but the material he has hurts them. Some type of chemical. Whatever, anything of the sort. It's sci-fi. It's all bullshit anyway. Dustin, deal with the, the creature. I think that would have worked better if it wasn't just such an obvious digital which again sticks out such a sore thumb. Missed all this 80s, 80s, 80s aesthetic. And also, maybe because I did not see this when it came out. So, when it came out, the whole 80s aesthetic thing maybe was a new gimmick. But now that so many other fucking movies and TV shows have stolen it. It's cool, but it's not mind-blowing. And like I said, the stories... The actual stories, when the kid gets possessed, well, I knew that was coming. You, that part of the story, you kind of know where it's going. and <laughs> That part of the story, I guess you could say, is predictable. Like, the, the creatures themselves are not really that interesting. It'll make you go pause and go, wow! That's cool. Oh, wow, that's unexpected with that. You know, the whole hive mind thing. We've seen that plenty of times before. So that's what I mean. There's nothing really original with the show. Granted, that doesn't mean it's a bad show. What can be original nowadays? But I just, with all the hype put into it, with all the hoopla put into it, I guess I expected a bit more originality. Like, to be fair, the first three episodes of American Horror Story... I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's pretty fucking original for what I've seen so far. The the 1984 one. This, eh, not really. And I say original based on just the, the twists and turns and like, where the hell is this going? But I just say so far like this, what this does the best is with the essential main characters. The kids, Eleven, Winona Ryder. It does a great job with them. As well as it in with Sean Astin's Bob and Paul Reiser's character. That's when the writing is is better. Not so much the sci fi, not so much the horror, not so much the creature stuff, but with the, the character stuff. Which, that in itself, along with the cinematography and the music, is why I just say, I like it okay. I like it alright. But I would never... You can't buy the show. It's one of the few Netflix things you can buy. Which, okay, so I can't buy Dolomite's My Name with Eddie Murphy. I can't buy an official copy of Bright or Extraction with Chris or all this other stuff. But... You know, I could buy Stranger Things. There's a few other Netflix shows. Not a whole lot of their movies, really enough. I guess not weird enough. It's like, no, we want you to watch on our program. Our Netflix. You want to watch it in? You got to get Netflix. Well, I don't have Netflix. I'm not getting Netflix. But anyway... That's what I mean. It's an okay show. It's alright. I just don't think it's the bee's knees. The best of the best. And I would never watch the show again. I hate the older sister character. I fucking despise her. 
I wish that character would die. I didn't like her in the first season. I don't like her even more in the second season. She treated the Steve character like shit. I don't give a fuck about her romance with Will's older brother. I don't give a fuck about them looking for hashtag justice for Barb. I don't give a fuck about this conspiracy guy who thinks it's the Russians or whatever the fuck he said. I don't give a fuck about giving a tape to him. I don't care how fucking stupid it was that they let Paul Reiser and his group let these teens in and she has a big fucking bag with her. Hmm, don't think the look just in case there's a fucking tape recorder this big in it. Wow, expert fucking security. Fucking stupid. That was a piece of writing that was idiotic. And like, fuck this girl, fuck, th like, just don't have a sister. And honestly, I don't even care if Will had an older brother. Take the older brother out, take the older sister out. I think it would be smoother, faster pace. We stick with the characters. Just have the kids, Eleven, David Harbour, Winona Ryder. There you go. And you didn't have the, the Steve, like, If you want, you can have the older sister, but not make her a main character. Make her peripheral like the parents of these kids. As Steve's with her, and then she dumps him, but he's still hanging out with the kids. And then Steve with the kids, and Eleven, and there you go. And it'd be like Rudy from Monster Squad. You know, an, a taller, older kid amongst the younger kids. There you go. Because that's what Steve kind of remind me of, Rudy from the Monster Squad. By, by the end of it. Which is probably why I grew to, to like him. See, that character, they did a better job writing. They, I'm sorry, they've done a piss poor job writing that older sister character. And not so much better the the Will. Uh, by the way, with the Will character, can you stop possessing the kid? I, it, it just, it just seemed, obviously it's following up season one. So he was in Upside Down World, so he gets the touch. So to speak. Can you like stop, leave him alone a bit. So b before it becomes redundant. <laughs> but yeah. Like I said. The characters. The fact that Eleven. Is so separated from the group. For most of the season. I think takes a lot of it. Of. There's a lot of stuff missing where Eleven, how does she react to all of these kids now that a year has passed by? Eleven mingling with these kids seemed like one of the bigger parts of season one. And then they just took that out of season two. And all by way, just throw her in back with the group in the final episode. I don't know, like I said, the emotion between Mike and Eleven seems a bit truncated because of that. Because it's like so much of her almost being her own separate movie away from any of this. It's like her doing her own separate show amongst all the other stuff going on with the plot. It just didn't feel as blended together as well as I would have liked it to be. And again, some more imagination on the creatures and the designs of the creatures would be uh, appropriate. I mean, I've seen them done on the X-Files episodes. You can't fucking tell me they can't do it for a show. I've seen practical effects in X-Files episodes. Okay. And despite the shitty fucking mythology that fucked up that show... You know, that's a show I'd rather watch again than this. At least, you know, the first couple seasons. Well, I like them until the fucking reboot seasons. Like, season 10 and 11, X-Files. That's where I want to puke now. Just think of that bullshit. They killed that fucking show. I'm sorry, I'm going off tangent. They killed that fucking X-Files. They killed the X-Files. All right. Oh no, it's an OT show. 
I do think there's more originality or more creativity that could be put into the creature format, into the sci-fi horror aspects of it. But I do think what makes this show popular is they do a decent job for the most part with the characters. Lucas, they don't really get much to do other than, here's a girl, she plays Did Dug, okay. Dustin with the little creature, again, if it's practical effect, they would work better. Mike doesn't really have anything to do. He comes in with a few ideas, but he tries to help Will, to be fair. David Harbour, there's a point where I really disliked his character. What the fuck are you doing? But at least they owned up to that by the end of season two. So I appreciate it. See, that's a piece of writing I do appreciate. So you know, overall, I think it's okay. You know, it's okay. It's all right. But I'm not in love with it with other people. You just want to hate it. If I wanted to hate it, I call it a piece of shit. I don't think it's a piece of shit. I did at one point. <laughs> there was a few of those episodes. I'm like, fuck this show. I was just getting frustrated with the shit. But that's what I mean. Like The last two episodes of season two were really good. And okay, it ended it. That's the thing. You won me over at the end. The ending, I think, is the most important part of your movie or your show. Because the ending made Sid go, was everything pointless or not pointless? And that's what I mean. At the very end, some of my issues, they were cultivated by the end. They were fixed by the end. So right now, I'm not, fuck the show. I'm more, it's okay. But okay, season eight. I mean, episode 89 are really good. Why couldn't the rest of the fucking show be this good? Why couldn't, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... With... With the way these last two episodes of season 2 were, why weren't the rest of the episodes that up to par? Maybe if you took, like, two or three of them and combine them, so you now feel like you're going slow as molasses, then maybe. Then maybe, but... Maybe, maybe, baby. So with that said, I don't hate the show. It's no longer fuck the show. The last two episodes did, episode 89 did help that. Just, okay, I think episode 8 is the best. And then episode 9 is the second best of season 2. Okay. Which season do I like more? Hmm, that's tough. I would give the edge to season 2 only because of stuff like... I did like, like I said, I like Sean Ass's character, Bob. I really did like him. I, But season one did have more of that 11 stuff that made it a bit more interesting. Hmm. I think... I really did like the last two episodes of this season. I think that alone kind of made me like this season more. Because like episode eight, I really did like the hospital scene where... Creatures all around. They gotta sneak around to get to the outside. Like th that was a very strong episode. So I don't know. I have to think about it more. I said season two, but season one has the eleven more better prominent. I think eleven was better used in season one. Her character was better used. While here, she's kind of on the outside, just doing this little thing here. Oh, now she's finally back. I did eleven. She felt more. In a way, more essential to the story. Like, in this, she was essential at the end. While that one seemed like she was essential all the way through. Maybe that doesn't make sense. I don't know how else to put it, but... Uh, with that said... Yeah, I have to think about it more. Thanks for watching. Take care. Watching my jumbled thoughts on it. But I would give it maybe... The show... At the very least, three out of five stars. At the very least. Maybe three and a half if I think about it some more. But, uh, yeah. I, I don't love the show. But I think it's okay. But that's why I kind of want to take a little bit of break from Stranger Things. Uh, maybe another day. Maybe in another month or so. But that's up to frame by frame. 
And frame by frame, I really do appreciate it. If you watch it, I hope these reviews didn't suck too badly. If so, I apologize. But we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.